that again. The President and Chairman of Council, Association of National Accountants of Nigeria, Dr. James Neminebo, FCNA, the Director General, Nigerian College of Accountancy, Dr. Friday Appa, FCNA, the Director of Studies, the Head of IT and the entire management, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Um, as the introduction has been made, we we'll go straight ahead and hit the ground running. This morning, we'll be looking at certification course in IPSAS Accrua. Now, before we commence this certification course, I will draw our attention to the templates we need for practical. Because the essence of this certification course is to prepare us for what is obtainable in the industry. Shortly after your PEB examination, some of you will find yourself in practice as consultants. And oftentimes, they call upon you, ministries, departments, agencies call upon you, come and give our staff training, or come and help us convert our books from cash IPSAS to IPSAS Accra, because we still have organizations today who are not complied, who have not complied with the provisions of IPSAS Accra. They have not converted their record from what it used to be to what it ought to be. That's why we have templates. It's not just theory, theory. There will be practical. It's mostly practical. And for you to download, the relevant template and the case study. We have a workbook. The workbook contains case studies. All the questions we'll be solving for these two days are already packaged in what I've tagged case studies. We have one for IPSAS, Accra. We have one for IFRS. For you to access this, I'm sure this is the first time some of you will be visiting the annan elearning.org. There is an e-learning platform developed for your use. And on that platform, we are going to see tomorrow, before we round up tomorrow's session, how to access the resources on that e-learning platform. So let's go. For you to download the templates, the case study for this certification course, launch your browser. I expect all of us to have our laptop for this certification course. It's not just theory, so you need hands-on. Launch your browser. As I'm saying it, I'm doing it. I've launched my own Firefox. If you want to use Chrome, you can go ahead to use Chrome. Um, when you launch that, please pay rapt attention. Because shortly after the general overview that I'm going to do shortly, uh, the next thing will just go to case study, case study one, case study two, and so on. Now, when you launch your browser, you type, this is the domain, Anan, see what I'm typing, Anan eLearning, Anan eLearning.org. Just watch. Check your screen very well. Or you write it down, annanelearning.org. Then you press enter, annanelearning.org. You press enter, watch. Now, this is the e learning platform that has been developed for your own use. <clears throat> we are going to take an exploration of the e-learning, a tour of this e-learning platform by God's grace tomorrow, so that you see the resources contained therein for your own maximum use. Now, when you get to Anna e-learning uh, platform, as you can see on the screen, can you see up here, IPSAS and IFRS? Click on IPSAS and IFRS. Now, Certification course in IPSAS and IFRS template. I will advise you to download all because all this, once you download this IFRS for tomorrow, 
IPSAS, IPSAS financial templates, first time adoption, IPSAS performance report, the IPSAS general purpose financial statement. We will need these four for today. IPSAS documentation, IPSAS financial template, first time adoption, IPSAS performance report, the IPSAS general purpose financial template. You download those templates, then you copy them to your desktop. When you download them, copy them to your desktop. Uh, Shola Oyinloye, Mr. Shola, I can see and hand. Is somebody raising his hand. Unmute yourself. What's your question? Now, when you download that, case studies. We have case studies, IFR certification, PEB 2022-2023 session. Then case studies, IPSAS, PEB 2022-2023 session. For these case studies, you are expected to print it in hard copy so that when you have the hard copy, as I'm taking the question, you are looking at it, you are following the question, then you are using your system to solve. But if you know how to partition your system, you can partition it into two. One part, you'll be looking at the case study. Then the other part, you'll be doing the calculation or you'll be solving the problem, whichever would be the correct thing for you to do is to have it in hard copy. Just as I'm showing you, if you can see my own copy I'm showing here, I have my own printed already. So the same thing we expect you to have. Once again, let me do a quick recap. Um, for you to download the template we need for this certification course, you are to launch your browser, then type annanelearning.org. As soon as you get to the platform, the e-learning portal, you click on IPSAS and IFRS. For the templates, you have to download all of them. Then copy to your desktop. I will start by downloading this first one. IPSAS financial template It's just to click, just watch. As I click on that, can you see? As I'm downloading now, download complete. Yeah, I have it downloaded. Enable editing. <laughs> so I have consolidated opening statement. That's for first time. Uh, what I say you should do, you can save this one to your desktop. Save to your desktop. I do the same. Save as save. All right. If you have done that, I said the next important thing is for us to download the case study. See the case study. Please do that. What I've done now, just download all these templates. They are actually templates we need for practical. But for this case study, I'm sure your center coordinators must have informed you ahead that you are expected to print this. But if you have not done so, uh, if you have access to a printer around you, you can do that within the next 30 minutes. When I'm taking the overview, you can go and print the hard copy. Now, case studies, IPSAS, PEB, that's what you will need for today. Then tomorrow, the case studies for IFRS. Now let's go straight and start. By way of introduction, IPSAS is the acronym for International Public Sector Accounting Standards, and they are a set of global reporting standards published from time to time by the International Public Sector Accounting Standard Board based in the United Kingdom. They are set of global reporting standards expected of preparers of financial statement 
in the public sector to adopt while preparing their financial statement. Oftentimes, I've had people who have been in the training where we train people and people argue that which one is relevant to us in the university, public university. Is this IPSAS, ACRA, or IFRS? Ladies and gentlemen, IPSAS is for public sector entities. And when you have a public sector entity who has the permission or authority to go into business, to register as a company, to do business and make profit, and is given also the authority to prepare our own financial statement. In that case, that public sector entity owned by government is classified as government business enterprises. And the relevant standard for such public sector entity owned by government, but with the authority to go into business, make profit, have financial autonomy to generate revenue for government and to prepare our own financial statement. That public sector entity is reclassified as government business enterprise and IFRS is the relevant standard. Now we'll go as fast as we can. Uh, this uh, theory part, we we'll just go. Now in IF, IPSAS ACRA, IPSA set out recognition, measurement, presentation, and disclosure. And each of the IPSAs you pick, uh, there is a saying that IFRS is the mother of IPSAs, except for about four or five. There is no IFRS you are going to pick that you can feel. Oh, there is no IPSAs you are going to pick that doesn't have its equivalent in IFRS. Now, when you pick any IPSA standard, you will see the breakdown as you are seen on the screen. Uh, let me share the screen so we can see better um, bolder. All right. Now, each IPSAS you pick, this is the breakdown set out as follows. You see introduction, objective, scope, definitions, accounting policies, recognition and measurement, disclosures, transitional provisions, effective date, appendices, basis for conclusion, comparison with corresponding IAS. And so far, so good. You can see IPSAS published to date. IPSAS published to date. IPSAS 1, IPSAS 2, we will not we're going to waste time on this. IPSAS 3, net surplus, or IPSAS 4, IPSAS 5, borrowing cost, IPSAS 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. You continue that way. We are going to share this slide with you. You already have this. So IPSAS started the first time adoption. 34 separate financial, 35 consolidated financial statement, 36 investment associate, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42. We have some other IPSAS that is undergoing what we call exposure draft. And once those exposure drafts are certified by the relevant authority, they are also published as part of the IPSAS. Now, when we talk of first-time adoption of IPSAS, if you follow the trend of events in the public sector, it has been concluded. That's why I said earlier that some ministries, departments, and agencies have not complied. That it has been expected or concluded that by 1st January 2016, all ministries, departments, agencies of the 36 states and the FCTA and the 776 local governments should have adopted IPSAS ACRA. That has been the date. That no matter the accounting system that has been operational in the public sector before this date, either cash basis or partial ACRA, it is 
expected that by 1st January 2016, all these financial statements ought to have been converted to IPSAS Accra. And what we say is a public sector entity, when you see PSE here, the public sector entity you see, is expected to, upon adoption of Accra IPSAS, to apply the full provision of the applicable IPSAS. Now, for a first time adopter of IPSAS, here are the guidelines on first time adoption when you are adopting IPSAS Accra for the first time. So, overview of guidelines on first time adoption, opening statement of financial position. Now, let me explain this. When you have a ministry, department, or agencies that have been using either cash basis, or partial accrual basis or monthly transcripts. Those are the three ways we are known to, or we are known with in the public sector. It is expected that as of January 1st, as of January 1st, 2016, all these financial statements should be converted to what? Opening statement of financial position. It means the very first step in the journey to IPSAS Accra adoption is conversion of the report in the old form, the old way, into what? Opening statement of financial position. Then we say the guidelines on first time adoption also cover accounting for revenue, accounting for expenditure, accounting for asset accounting for liabilities and equity and related accounting issues on first time adoption. Uh, if you look at this revenue, expenditure, asset, liabilities and equity, these are the components of the IPSAS actual financial statement. Because once you take, for example, statement of financial position, what is accounting equation? Asset must be equal to what? Capital plus liabilities. Put in another word, ownership must be equal to ownership. So it's another way to say when you are adopting IPSAS for the very first time, the guidelines that will guide you on how to go about it must also make provision for assets, liabilities, and equity. That's statement of financial position. Then when you look at revenue and expenditure in accounting, when you talk of revenue, you match it against expenditure. What do we have? Net income. That is statement of financial performance. First time adoption of IPSAS. So the financial statement prepared by public sector entities, that's the PSEs, depend on the basis of accounting adopted. I've mentioned this earlier. If we are talking of the cash basis accounting, it means the relevant public sector entity is preparing a financial statement according to what you are seeing here. Statement number one, cash flow statement. Statement number two, statement of assets and liabilities. Statement three, the statement of consolidated revenue fund. Then statement four, statement of capital development fund. Ladies and gentlemen, let me re-emphasize. When you say a public sector entity is preparing a financial statement on cash basis. What we are saying is they prepare four statement. Statement one, statement two, statement three, and statement four, as you can see on the screen. But on adoption of IPSAS Accra for the first time, I said this earlier, all these statements prepared by all of government, that is the 36 state government, Federal Capital Territory Administration, and 774 local government and core ministry and departments not established by act of parliament are expected to be converted to what? Opening statement of financial position. We are going to practically demonstrate this this morning. That's one of the case study. How do I convert financial statement that has been prepared on cash basis? How do I convert it to IPSAS Accra. That's the first case study we'll see shortly. 
Now, we have some other ministries or agencies who have been using accrual accounting even before we talk of adoption of IPSAS accrual according to provisions of IPSAS 33. Like I give example, uh, 1999 when I left, okay, I joined UBA 99, then 2001, I was with Nigerian Law School as an accountant. What we use in Nigerian law school to account for transaction is the accrual accounting basis. But that accrual accounting basis we use is not IPSAS ACRA compliant. And when we say accrual basis of accounting now, that is not IPSAS ACRA compliant. We are talking of statement of income and expenditure, balance sheet, cash flow statement value added statement and yet see the public sector entities in this group are set up by acts of parliament and are expected to submit their annual financial statement to their boards or governing councils but what ipsas acra is saying is on adoption of ipsas for the very first time all these four statements you are also seeing under accrual accounting must be converted to what opening statement of financial position so the very first step in the journey to IFSA's accrual adoption is for you to convert all the records, all the financial statement prepared in the old way to just one single statement, opening statement of financial position. Then immediately after that 1st January 2016, which was the original date of adoption given, by the Federation Accounts Allocation Committee, that is the subcommittee responsible for anything IPSAS ACRA. They will now give uh, other years of grace because they knew it that people will not comply. They will not meet up with that day. They give additional grace period, like three years, for us to convert our financial statement. Now, Immediately after 1st January 2016, every other report you will now prepare according to provisions of IPSA APRA will be as provided in IPSAS 1. IPSAS 1 is presentation of financial statement. We are going to see that later. Uh, when you say presentation of financial statement, it means once you take the first step, I've converted the whole financial statement either as cash basis or accrual basis. I've converted it to opening statement of financial position. It means effective from that 2016, when you conclude the financial year, which end 31st December 2016, and you now want to prepare your report according to IPSAS accrual, you will now be talking of statement of financial performance, statement of financial position, statement of cash flow, statement of changes in net assets, then notes to the account. We see all this today. First time adoption, I say the statement of financial position of the above is as in the format of the statement of asset and liabilities. Accra base of accounting, the statement of financial position is called balance sheet. Now we are now saying whether we call it statement of asset and liabilities under cash basis, or we call it balance sheet under accrual basis, effective from January 2016, all those statements will cease to exist and it will be replaced with what is called opening statement of financial position. Still on first time, all public sector entity on the adoption of IFSAS ACRA accounting are to prepare an opening statement of financial position. I uh, will have said this just for point of emphasis. Now, the next thing we will see quick, we are taking all the theory because after this theory is just practical. Um, general purpose financial statement. Now that you have converted those financial statements, prepare either on cash basis or accrual basis. You have converted them to what? Opening statement of financial position. The next step you are to take 
as a consultant or professional accountant that has been engaged to prepare the report of a public sector entity is to now go to GPFS, General Purpose Financial Statement. And according to General Purpose Financial Statement as contained in IPSAS 1, the main financial statement to be prepared are, I've just mentioned this also a while ago, statement of financial performance, statement of financial position, statement of cash flow, statement of changes in net asset or equity, a comparison of budget and actual amounts. That's IPSAS 24. Then notes to the account. Performance report. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, if we still remember very well, especially if you follow the trend of events in the public sector, when the former minister of finance was there before this current one took over from her, there was a time we were told in Nigeria that there are some Yes, there are some funds available for state government. And the emphasis then was only states that meet the requirement of IPSAS will access the funds. And one of the requirements of IPSAS then expected of state government to comply with is performance reports. After the opening statement of financial position, when you convert for the first time, then after preparing all those statements prescribed by IPSAS 1, that's General Purpose Financial Statement, the next report expected of ministries, departments, and agencies to prepare is what you are seeing on the screen. Performance reports. There are five of them. Revenue Performance Report, Recurrent Expenditure Performance Report, Capital Expenditure Performance Report, periodic bank reconciliation statement, the monthly cash advances report. We are going to see all these demonstrated practically today. As if that was not enough, the subcommittee of Federation Accounts Allocation Committee also said, for us in Nigeria, we are expected to also maintain or keep some records under IFSAS Accra. You know the reason they are saying all this? They want transparency, accountability, and comparability. If you look at our whole SAS, Statement of Accounting Standard, precisely uh, SAS 22, that one talk about a breach financial statement. That is, the people at the top don't have time to read financial statement to cumbersome. But if SAS and IFRS is saying, don't abridge anything, we want everything in detail. Paraventure, you even have transactions that cannot be quantified in Naira terms, put it as notes to the accounts. Put it as what? Notes to the account. That's why today you pick up a published financial statement of an entity. All the provisions in IPSAS 1, statement of financial performance, statement of financial position, statement of changes in net asset, statement of cash flow, and comparison of budget and actual. You realize this thing may not be more than 10 pages. But when you look at the notes to the accounts, that can be even more than 50 pages. They want it in detail. Now, the subcommittee of the Federation Accounts Allocation Committee is saying we should maintain all these records or documentation. See them, allocation register, grant register, loans register, revenue register, journal voucher, loan ledger, salaries and wages register, payables register, inventory issue register, accounts receivable register, ledger, investment register. And when you pick allocation register, for example, this data set expect us, or this data set is used to record various allocations from government. That is just the work. They are all data sets. We are going to see them demonstrated shortly. In conclusion, I'm not drawing conclusion here now. I will leave the conclusion until we are done with all the practical. Uh, once again, let me do a quick recap before we go into the practical now. What we have done so far or what I've said so far. 
I'll summarize, if possible, four sentences. Number one sentence is this, that before 1st January 2016, ministries, departments, and agencies prepare their financial statement in three major ways. One, cash basis, accrual basis, then monthly transcript. Statement number two, effective from that first January 2016, all ministries, departments, and agencies of the 36 state, federal capital territory administration, and the 774 local governments of Nigeria are expected to convert or to adopt IPSAS accrual. Statement number three, that the only singular step expected of ministry, departments, and agencies to take on adoption is to convert all the financial reports they have prepared either on cash basis or on aqua basis or on monthly transcript into what? Opening statement of financial position. And statement number four is that in addition to the preparation of that statement of financial position, that's opening statement of financial position, all ministries, departments, and agencies in Nigeria are expected to also comply with the provisions of IPSAS 1, that is general purpose financial statement, and also prepare performance reports which we have five of them. And these five include what? Revenue performance report, capital expenditure performance report, recurrent expenditure performance report, monthly reconciliation statement, and cash advances report. And also maintain minimum those 12 documentation, all those aid register, ledger, investment register, and so on. Let's take some few questions because now we're going to practical demonstration. I can see uh, Joseph Abutu. You can unmute yourself and ask your question. Please unmute yourself and ask your question. Unmute yourself. Joseph, you can ask your question, please. If Joseph is not asking, maybe... All right, I'll, let me call the next person. Shola, please see an option to unmute yourself. Good morning, Professor. Good morning. Uh, your name and where you're connecting from? My name is Shola. I'm calling from Abuja. Following right, question, I wanted to ask earlier pertaining downloading those uh, samples that's the, the uh, from the Anana e-learning site. I just want to find out if those app, all those things you say we should download, if it will work on another application like MacBook Pro and maybe Windows 11 or Windows 10. Yeah, they are spreadsheet. It will work. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Sir. All right. All right, for the benefit of those just joining, let me see. Okay, Adeju Mokeres and Wellington. Ask your question before we go further. Wellington, you can ask your question. Go ahead. All right, Wellington, please see an option to unmute yourself. <laughs> Hello, good morning, sir. Morning, My name is Relin Tenolua Tosin. Sorry, sir, please, all these things you've been teaching, now, where can we get the book form, or where can we get, in case we are less busy, we can go through everything that we've taught us. All right, um, I'm going to share the slide. I think I will, before the end of the certification course, 
I will share the slide with us. That's number one. Number two, I'm sure the college is also recording the presentation. You can watch over and over. And, and Prof, the, the, the slides are, uh, have been dropped on their WhatsApp by the DS. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you yes, for sir. that information. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. All right. Um, the next thing we do now, for the benefit of those just joining us, you need to have a copy of the case study. So it'll be easier for us and very fast. I will make it as fast as possible. For you to download the materials, that's the templates, and for you to download the case studies, Ipsas Accra, launch your browser. Uh, when you launch your browser, let me go back here now. Then you type Annan elearning.org tomorrow again please tell your other colleagues to join if they miss out in today's uh, session they should join tomorrow because we're going to take a tour of the Anna e-learning platform there are a lot of information in that platform it includes video audio presentation there are some selected topics from those courses you are going to write in your exam that has to do with calculation. We've selected some topics and treated them to guide you or help you when you are doing your final revision. And meanwhile, when you go to annaelearning.org, then press enter. It will take you straight to the Annan eLearning, that's Nigerian College of Accountancy eLearning portal. And once you are there, you click on IPSAS and IFRS. Can you see? So all these templates, we're going to need them. We will need them for the certification course today and tomorrow. So download all these five templates and copy them to your desktop. We are not asking you to print out the template. They are templates with formulas that we use for practical demonstration. But the one you are expected to print out is the case studies. So that as you have your case study in add copy, you can be solving on your system. But the one we know we need for this moment is case study IPSAS. Let me click on it. I've clicked to download. If you click on that, see what we have here. Certification course in IPSAS Accra case studies. Can you see module one? That's first time adoption of IPSAS. And see the case study there. See, so below, we have started. Below is the existing statement of assets and liabilities of federal, state, local government councils. Statement number two, as at 31 December 2015. Ladies and gentlemen, if I stop here and ask you, the particular government council that prepared this statement, you are seeing, statement of assets and liabilities must have been using what basis of accounting? Who can give us the answer here? Is it cash basis of accounting? Is it accra basis or monthly transcript? Sometimes when I ask questions like this, somebody with the answer you can quickly type and send as chats because of time. Everybody is muted. Don't worry, this is cash basis. If you recollect, we say, for ministry, department, and agencies that prepare their financial statement on cash basis, they are expected to prepare four major statements. Statement number one, statement number two, and this is one of the statements. Now let's go. The question, this is the statement of asset and liability as at 31 December 2015. Can you see cash held by AGF? CRF, bank balance, consolidated revenue fund, pension account, CBN. This question continue to see it here. Total public fund, external and internal loans, other liability, deposits, unremitted taxes, value added tax. Then if you look at this statement of asset and liability, can you see that total asset is 
665,770. Assets must be equal to liabilities plus capital, capital plus liability. So let's see the liabilities. See liabilities, then see the total. Let's go, go ahead. Total liabilities. Can you see? 303655770 balance. Now we have additional information. Stock valuation of all reporting PSE as at 31 December 2015, 25,500,000. On pay salaries of all reporting public sector entity as at 31 December 2015, 15,900,000 required. Convert the statement of asset and liabilities of the federal, state, local government councils into what? Opening statement of financial position as at 1st January 2016 in accordance to the provisions of IPSAS. Ladies and gentlemen, I told us earlier, this is the very first step. I'm doing the theory here and a bit the practical demonstration online here. But from experience also, our consulting firm has consulted for different ministry departments and agencies. And we have practically converted their cash basis IPSAS into IPSAS accrual. And this is the very first thing we also did. So that as you go there in the industry, after your successful graduation, from the college and induction into the membership fold of Anand, you have an assignment to help convert. This is the first thing you will do. And to do this, it's not by row and paper accounting. That's why I said you need those templates. Now, here is the question we have. To make our work faster and for us to close as soon as possible today, have helped us in this particular copy I'm giving to you to reclassify. But the original question will not come with what you are seeing in this last column here. Are we following? All this will be blank. It is you who will reclassify all the items in the statement of asset and liabilities. You will reclassify them according to the provisions of IPSAS 33. So if you see what I've done here, see cash held by AGF, what Ipsas Accra is saying is that when you convert to opening statement of financial position, you will not see any of this item on the pages of that statement of financial position. You have to reclassify all this item. You have to regroup some of them. And what is the YASTI, what is the criteria for you to regroup? They are all provided for in your IPSAS 33. Now, for CRF, bank balance, CBN, anything cash and cash equivalent, can you see what I will reclassify them? In the format, in the template we are going to use, there is no provision for any CRF pension. What IPSAS 33 have said we should do, any money you see in the statement of asset and liabilities under cash basis, you should reclassify them as what? Cash and cash equivalent. That's why I added this third column. So that we have CRF, cash and cash equivalent. This CCE you are seeing, short form for cash and cash equivalent. Then we go, federal government investment, you reclassify it as investment. I've seen some question papers like that. They give you statement of asset and liabilities the way you are seeing it. And they will take off all this column. And your own assignment is to reclassify all the items in the statement of asset and liabilities according to provision of IPSAS 33, first time adoption. So let's go. Now, impressed is to be reclassified as prepayment. That's why you have prepayments there. Advances also reclassified as what? Prepayment. Revolving loans granted when you give loan to staff in a ministry, department, and agencies is like a debtor they are owing, and debtors are liabilities. And another word for uh, sorry, debtors are assets. Another word for debtor is receivables. 
receivables. That's why we have this check. Then public funds, according to provisions of IPSAS 33, consolidated revenue fund has been reclassified as reserves. Capital development fund also reclassified as reserves. Other public funds reclassified as public funds. Police reward fund reclassified as public funds. Then external loans, federal government only, is to be reclassified. That's why you're seeing the reclassification. They are long-term borrowings. Federal government bonds and treasury bonds has been reclassified as what? Long-term borrowings. Nigerian treasury bills, another one has a short span. It has been reclassified as what? Short-term borrowings. Development loan stock, when you hear development, long-term, has been reclassified as long-term borrowings. Other internal loans in bracket, promissory notes, it has been reclassified as short-term borrowings. The internal loans from other funds, other internal loans, long-term borrowings. Then other liabilities, deposits has been reclassified as deposits. That's what IPSAS 33 and the publication from the subcommittee of Federation Accounts Allocation Committee has recommended because they give us guidelines how to re reclassify all those items. Then for unremitted taxes, when you say unremitted taxes, withholding tax, maybe the one from a company or contractors, the one we, we, you withhold, they are to be reclassified as what? Unremitted deductions. Because in the opening statement of financial position, there is no provision. You will not see anything like unremitted taxes, whatever. What you will see is unremitted deductions. Then value added tax also reclassified as unremitted deductions. Payee on remitted deductions, the unremitted sundry deduction, union dues, every other thing, national housing fund, all those funds you have deducted are classified as unremitted deductions, unremitted deduction. Cooperative societies, staff housing loans, national health insurance scheme, pension deductions, they are unremitted deduction. There are other deductions. Unremitted deduction. Now, if you have your bureau and paper, I've even given us a clue. Remember the principle, the bedrock of the modern financial accounting as discovered by the Italian priest, Luca Pacioli, 1494. 1494, 1474. Debit credits, that every transaction is expected to have two fold, two sides. You debit, you credit. And I have advised students, particularly as you prepare for an exam coming up next week, advanced corporate reporting, that when you have a question and you have additional information, once you know how to treat each of the additional information, which account am I debiting, which one am I crediting? And you have a mental picture of the format of the report you are asked to prepare. For example, maybe you are asked to prepare consolidated statement of comprehensive income. Sorry, I'm going to IFRS now. You are asked to prepare consolidated statement of comprehensive income. And you all have this understanding that in IFRS, Assets are arranged according to order of durability. You start with PPE, property, plant and equipment, biological asset, intangible asset, investment property, the investment. Then as soon as you are done with those non-current assets, you total it, then you bring in your current assets. You have total assets. Then finance by, you now begin to talk of the ordinary share capital, that's shareholders equity. Then you add it to liabilities. Once you have that mental picture that, okay, this is the format, and you go straight to your additional information, debit, credit, debit, credit. It is very difficult for you not to have a balanced account. And then I now give students a key. After you post all your entries in exam, a smart student will not even go and check whether 
the asset is equal to capital and liability. <laughs> Sorry, don't let me digress. Because there is tendency, when you check your assets, okay, after posting all the entries, asset, capital, and liability posted, if you not total, you total your asset, you total capital and liability, you did not agree. There is tendency that you will be confused. Where have I gone wrong? But you don't have time. You don't have that time in exam. I've written an exam before, my hundred level ABU Zaria. We are asked, we are giving transactions. We are asked to post into ledgers, balance of the ledgers and extract a trial balance. And as soon as I, I posted to trial balance, sorry, I posted to ledgers, I balanced of the ledgers, I posted to trial balance, I've entered all the entries, both on the debit and credit. And for me to now total, the lecturer say, stop writing, time is up. And I know this lecturer very well. Once he asks you to stop writing an exam and you refuse, I've seen him before, start tearing paper. One particular day after tearing student scripts, maybe the hand was paining him, he started using his sticks to tear script. Why am I sharing this with us? I did not have time to check whether the debit of my trial balance agree with the credit. But when this lecturer marked my script and they gave it to us, he called me 2020. So sometime, all this one, I want to balance. It's not a must. If you are able to balance, fine and good. Go and solve the next question. And when you now solve the next question, you now come back to that very first one to now check, okay, did he agree? If we did not agree, then if you have time, check the reason for this agreement. Now, for this additional information here, it must obey the double entry principle. And I've given us a guide how to treat them. Stock valuation of all reporting PSE as at 34 December 2015, 25,500,000. How do you treat this? Do you know that stock is another word for inventory under IPSAS and ACRA? It means you are going to debit the inventory account. And for every debit entry, there is a corresponding credit entry. So the next question will be, which account am I going to credit? Do you know it's a gain? When you are valuing stock, you debit as it means you have additional stock. So the credit entry will go to reserve. See it here, credit reserves. There is an account you open, you credit reserve. Let's check the second one, unpaid salaries. What are unpaid salaries? That means the work has been done, but payment has not been made. And as an entity, as an organization, people have worked for you and you have not paid them. It becomes what in accounting? Payables. It becomes a liability. So this unpaid salaries, because in the opening statement of financial position, there is no provision for anything salaries. They are all classified as payables. So the correct entry for this second item is to debit, you know that one is like a loss, you are owing is to debit the reserves account and credit payables. See it here, debit reserves and credit payables. Once you do this, whatever is the difference between the debit side of the reserves and the credit, when you balance that ledger, you will not take it into the statement of financial position. Ladies and gentlemen, for those of us who are really ready for this certification course, how do I know those who are really ready? There are those who have their laptops with them. Those are the ones ready. Quickly now, go and launch that very first uh, statement. Uh, that's the templates. I will show us the template we will need now to solve this question. Uh, first time adoption, if see it here. From the templates you downloaded, you downloaded templates from where? From Annan e-learning platform. This is the relevant template we need now to solve that case study. Case study one, please pay up attention. Pay rapt attention. I'm giving to you 
the same template we have used to convert for ministry departments and agencies. And if I also want to tell you, it's not small money when you are invited to come and convert. We are talking of millions. Huh? So we say thanks to Anan and thanks to Nigerian College of Accountancy for just giving this certification course and this material to students as cheap as 10,000, you pay 10,000 only. And some of you will make judicious use of this. It will fetch you millions. So kudos to our visionary association for this opportunity for you to access what you need out there to distinguish you. Now, let's go straight. Um, if you check this template, please pay attention. This is the format for opening statement of financial position for a first time adopter of IPSAS Accra. And like I told us earlier, when I was going through the case study, can you see anything like CDN consolidated? No, there is no provision for that in the format where this is the approved format as released by the subcommittee of the Federation Accounts Allocation Committee. All you need to do, for those of you who have the question, add copy, cash and cash equivalent. What is expected of us to do now? That same case study, where we have reclassified about how many items, uh, CRF, bank balance, pension account, cash balance of trust fund, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. About eight items has been reclassified as cash and cash equivalent. All you just need to do is to sum all the items together. And if you sum together, it should give us the same total we have in that case study. 190 million, I'm typing it, 190 million, 376, 770, enter. Can you see? That's why it is a template. Already formulas are there. Receivables. The next thing I will check. See, I have the art copy here. I will check which and which item I will reclassify as receivable. You add the two together if they are up to two. And from my question here, we have only one item reclassified as receivable. I will type the amount six million. 549,000, I'll enter. Prepayments, how many items have we reclassified as prepayment? Impress and advances, add the two together. It will give you 52,430,000, enter. Inventories, inventories. I've asked before when I had a training uh, with, some staff this time around practical training not online we're there together when i ask question that how many items have we reclassified as inventory the common answer is no item don't forget your additional information check the additional information that we just treated where we are giving stock valuation so you bring in this inventory there that stock valuation additional information will come in here and what is the value of the 25 million 500,000, enter. Can you see, we are done with total current asset. Then we go to non-current assets. Non-current asset. Do you know by entering 25,500,000 here, I've debited inventory accounts. So the second leg we go to reserve. Let's go here now. Non-current asset. let's check. Have we reclassified any item as long-term loans? I know some of you will quickly say yes, but the long-term borrowings we have reclassified are not under asset, they are liabilities. Somebody asked a question, how will long-term loan be an item under non-current assets? It's very simple. If a ministry, department, and agency has too much money and law permits them to lend the money out. That is the long-term loan you are seeing here. 
if the organization is the one giving out the loan, then it is an asset to them. But the one we have in this question is organization collecting, so it's a liability. We don't have any such long-term loan as an asset. Don't let us waste time. What of investment? Have we classified anything as investment? The answer is yes. You type 54 million 300,000. 54 million. Property, plants, and equipment, we don't have any in this question because of cash basis. Investment property, we don't have any. Intangible asset, we don't have any. All these other ones, you will see it in your practice question. There is a practice question I've given you. That one, you will see property, plants, and equipment. You will see investment property, and you will see intangible asset there. Now, can we see our total? Total asset is what? Total current asset plus total non-current asset. Already had it because this is a template. Then the next thing we go to our liabilities. Watch. The first item in liability, deposit, check. From your question, from the case study, we reclassify some item as deposit. I think it's only one. Deposit, deposit, 35 million. See it here? Enter. Then short-term loans and debts. Check very well. We have about how many items? We reclassify Nigerian treasury bills, short-term loans and borrowings, other internal loans, promissory note. That's also short-term loan. When you add the two together, Nigerian treasury bill, 45 million. The other internal loan promise, you know, 3 million, 100,000. So it will give us 48 million. Let me see, 45, yeah, 48 million, 100,000. Enter. See that? Unremitted deductions. Can you see the long list of item reclassifiers on remitted deduction? You will take time. You had the, all of them together. When you sum all of them together, it will give us 13 million. You can check that later. 739,470. Then payables. Payables. Have we reclassified any item as payables? I know somebody will quickly say no. Check your additional information. That on paid salaries, we have said the correct entry is to debit reserve and credit payables. So to credit the payables, I'll bring it in here now, 15 million, 900,000. We already have our total current liabilities. Then we go to the next public funds. Of course, we have also reclassified some items as what? Public funds. Check your question. All those items that has been reclassified as public fund, sum them together. It will give us 88,342,200. Then long-term provisions. We don't have any such provisions, but we now have long-term borrowings. Long-term mm -hmm. borrowings, about four items. See them from the question, external loans to federal government, Federal Government of Nigerian Bonds. Uh, we have Development Loan Stock. Then we have Internal Loans. Four items. The total will give you 71,615,100. With this, can you see your total non-current liabilities? 159,957,300. Then... Ladies and gentlemen, I need to explain something here. In the normal, conventional, or traditional accounting, we say, how do you know if your account balance or balance, statement of financial position balance? Asset must be equal to capital plus liabilities. Are you there? That is for IFRS, International Financial Reporting Standard. Because the way the format has been designed, I've told us earlier, you have your non-current asset plus your current asset. You have total asset financed by shareholders' equity, then liabilities. Once the two sides agree, it's balanced. But for this 
ipsas acroa, particularly as approved by the subcommittee of Federation Accounts Allocation Committee for Nigeria. In your linear equation, you say asset is equal to capital plus liabilities. Do you know? Once you take liabilities to the other side, cross, it becomes minus. It means asset minus liabilities. Are we there? We give us what? Capital. Now, what we are trying to say is, once you say total asset minus total liabilities, what you have is net asset. In your financial management, when you talk of valuation of company for purpose of resale or for purpose of sale or purchase, and you say you want to use the net asset basis, all you just need to ask under that method is, you want to buy over Zenith Bank, ask them two questions. What is the total value of your asset? They say 100 billion. Then give me the figure for your total liabilities. They say 18 billion. 100 billion minus 18 billion will give you 82 billion. It means Zeni Bank is worth 88 billion naira. That is net asset. That is what we arrive at here. Net asset. So in this particular format here, how do you know whether your account agree? Net asset must be equal to net asset. And the first definition of net asset is this. Total asset minus total liabilities, which is what we have done here. If you look at accounting equation, again, if I take total liabilities to where we have our asset, and I say total asset minus total liabilities is equal to what? Capital. So the second way to establish net asset is shareholders' equity. If it is a private company, shareholders' equity is what? Ordinary shares plus all reserves. <coughs> but since this one is public sector, there's nothing like ordinary shares. That's why we now have here capital grant reserves. This capital grant here is what is representing ordinary share capital, then plus reserve. So once the total I have here, agree with this 56 million 459,000. Then our statement of financial position for a first time adopter of Ipsas Accra as balance. And ladies and gentlemen, how do we calculate this? How do we arrive at reserve? Let's check our question. I will employ you if you have your uh, please pay attention, but I will still show it here. <laughs> if you have your biro and paper there, just draw out a ledger. Draw out a ledger and call it reserve. As I'm seeing it, I'm typing it. You call it reserves. Reserves accounts, just like reserves. Of course, when we say reserve, this is your debit side. This is your credit side, for example. Now, you check if I decide to give this one, uh, this is the Naira. Don't worry about that. I may not use this. Now, you check from the question we are giving. Do we have any item that has been classified as a reserve? Check from our case studies. I think we have them. Consolidated Revenue Fund. See it here. Here I will put consolidated revenue fund reserves are all having credit balances. I will type it there. Is thirty four? Watch thirty four million five hundred thousand. See it there. Thirty four million five hundred thousand. Then we have capital development fund. Capital. Development fund. You do the same by run paper. Do it. Capital development fund is twelve million three fifty nine thousand three fifty nine thousand. See it here. Then 
the meaning of this is that we have only two items that has been originally classified as reserves. The next thing I will now check, I will go back to my additional information. Those entries that have said debit this, credit reserve. The other one I say debit reserve, credit payables. I will bring them here. So from our case study, the very first question say, oh, um, is this stock? Valuation of stock, let me be sure now. Stock valuation of all reporting PSC, 25 million 500,000. So what I will just do, I will come to the credit side and put inventory. Do you know the debit leg? I've already taken care of that in our statement of financial position. So this is the credit entry now. 25 million 500,000. Can you see that inventory? Now let's check the additional information too on paid salaries. And we say the accounting entry is to do what? For unpaid salaries, debit reserves and credit payables. That's unpaid salary payables. So here I will write payables. See it here? Payables. What is the value of payables? 15 million 15 million 900 thousand enter um once i do this if i want to separate them don't worry about all this just get the ladies and gentlemen all you need to do is to balance these accounts um I don't want to waste time here. If I say equal to equal to, I had all this together. I have what? Seventy two million three fifty nine thousand. So since the credit side is higher, I want this place also to be the same. 72, three what? 359,000, enter. I will have what? Balance carried down so what do we need now to balance this account once the difference between 72 million 359,000 and this payable give us whatever you have that's the figure i think um i can do it this way is equal to this minus this see the answer 56 million 459,000. I will go and key it in under reserve here. Save 56 million 459,000. And I will press enter. This is net assets. And I've seen here C note 15. This is how I arrive at it. But our own is to now compare this net asset, whether it's the same thing as this other first one. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the solution, the account agree. This is the opening statement of financial position for a first time adopter of IPSAS Accra. That means the entity has been preparing a financial statement on cash basis, but now they are converting to IPSAS Accra. A quick one, so I want us to, in another one hour, we should be done. We don't have to spend the whole day for this uh, certification course. Except you have question, but if you have question, hold your question until we are done with module two. We are just done with module one. Module two is on general purpose financial statements. And I've mentioned to us earlier that in general purpose financial statement, we are now expected that after we have converted to opening statement of financial position, we are no longer a first-time adopter. 
It means the next financial statement to be prepared by the public sector entity must now comply with IPSAS 1 and IPSAS uh, 24. IPSAS 24 should be budget information included in financial statement, published financial statement. Now go to module two. Let me close this. For those of us who have not downloaded the question, that's why I'm sharing again here. You see the case study. See the case study we are solving now. We are going to case study two, module two, general purpose financial statements. General purpose financial statement. A public sector entity prepares its financial statements according to the provisions of ACRA based IPSAS. Can you see the difference? The very first case study, they were preparing according to cash basis. That means the whole way. But after we have converted, now they don't talk of cash basis again. We now have a case of a public sector entity that prepares a financial statement according to provisions of ACRA basis. IPSAS. The financial information extracted from the books of the PSE is as follows. See their trial balance, recurrent grant, recurrent grant from other states, recurrent grant from FCT, tuition fees, accommodation fees, examination fees, personnel. You can see all these items under credits when you have a trial balance. Let me just give us a clue. Debit receiver, credit giver, double entry principle. Debit all asset, credit all liabilities. Then debit all expenses and losses, credit all income, gains, profit, and revenue. So all the items you see here under credits are either revenue or gains or profit or provisions or reserves. Any item you see in trial balance under credit. The any item you see in trial balance under debit are either expenses, losses, or assets. Let's go. Personal emolument, external examiner's fee, and so on. This one is just a page. Accrued expenses. And in this question, you are not the one classifying as unremitted deduction. They've already classified themselves because they are not first-time adopters. Then see the trial balance agree. Required, prepare the statement of financial performance for the year ended 31 December 2016 in conformity with the provisions of IPSAS and FAC. What is that FAC? Federation Accounts Allocation Committee. And ladies and gentlemen, to do this, then let's take two because we'll do two in one. Case two also say, prepare the statement of financial position as at 31 December 2016 in conformity with the provisions of IPSAS and FAC. So you have an examinable question here. Examinable question. Check Annam past question paper. I think maybe exactly this question has been tested before. Exactly this one. I'm not sure. Check the past question. Now, this question is asking you to prepare statement of financial performance and statement of financial position in conformity with IPSAS. To do this, since we are looking at the industry, because in the industry, it's not by row and paper. You need template. If you have downloaded your template, let me show us the right one to use for this case study. Um, general purpose financial template, first time adopters. I think I've not downloaded. Let me download it now. All right, see it here. Um, IPSAS it is the last template here. General purpose financial statement. I'll click to download. general purpose. Let me share with us now. Ipsas. See it here. You enable to edit. Now, there is tendency 
as soon as you download that general purpose financial statement, there is tendency that what you will see is statement of financial position or any other thing. But this question want us to prepare statement of financial performance. Check your Excel sheets, how we have renamed them. Just check my course all the way blinking here. I will click on statement of financial performance. This is what they ask us to prepare. Statement of financial performance. This is what they ask us to prepare. Then, of course, this template also have statement of financial position, statement of cash flow, statement of changes in equity, all these items that make up the general purpose financial statement. So let's come back here now. Statement of financial performance. The beauty of electronic accounting or system accounting is that once you design your template and you have your formulas correct, your own is just to key in the data. That's the beauty of digital electronic accounting. I don't know, so okay, maybe PEA, I think about two weeks ago when we had certification course in digital accounting, I drew the attention. There is even an AI now, artificial intelligence tool called formula, Excel formula bot. With Excel formula bot, you don't need to even design templates yourself again to say you want to use spreadsheet to design. It's automatic, you just go and specify. This is the template. I want you to do for me. Is it payroll? Is it cash budget? And anyway, no problem. I can see someone raise an hand raise. Can you unmute and ask your question? Unmute. Go ahead, please. Your question. IT, please enable him to unmute himself. All right, sir. Thank you, sir. 61133, please use share an option to unmute yourself. 61133. You can go ahead, please. Hello, can you hear me, sir? Very well, sir. Loud and clear. Hello. Your name and where you're connecting from. Hello, can you hear me, sir? Very well, sir. Okay, please. is it possible we got a recorded version after the program because where I am, the, the network is not stable. I've missed a lot. Can we, right. is it possible we have a recorded version after the program? All right, the college. That we can rewatch. Yeah, the college will make that one available. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, sir. All right, uh, let's go. If you see the trial balance again, I've arranged this question chronologically in such a way that it's just for you to key in. Now, the only, the original format, can you see this original format? Let's see. You see, there is provision for even previous year. If you want to compare the result of last year with the current year actual, there's provision for that in the original format of statement of financial performance. Then if you look at this format, you see initial original budget, supplementary budget, final budget, all for 2016. And when you compare the actual with final, can you see there is also provision for variance, C variance. It's one of the reasons we have said, if SAS Accroa and IFRS is really focusing on three key objectives, accountability, transparency, and comparability that you'll be able to compare previous results. But for this question, see our focus, pay attention. If you have the template with you, all you just need to do, what is recurring grant? Begin to key in, it's 100. Are we there? The recurring grant is 100. Just hold on. The recurring grant is 100. From the question, recording grant from other states, you put that 170. Just be typing. Don't tamper with those areas marked yellow. Recording grant FCT is 140. 
enter tuition fees 110 enter accommodation fees 60 enter examination 50 enter let's go now can you see total revenue automatically generated there because of the formulas embedded personnel emolument 120 enter external examiner's fees 25 enter examination printing and stationary 12 enter postgraduate supervision allowance from our question that's 14 you type 14 enter hostel expenses guest house bills is 20 enter expenditure on examinations 11 everything in million if you check up here everything in millions now for this question there is no depreciation there is no impairment charges there is no amortization but we have bad debt check bad debt is 24 from our question you put bad debt now you see what we have now total expenditure is 226 million and surplus from operating activities automatically generated as 404 let's go we are not done yet then check public debt charges ladies and gentlemen please pay attention if you don't come for a training like this somebody will think that public debt charges is an outflow so let me uh, use is part of the expenses let me just type direct like that but here the way the format has been designed for this public debt charge if you see the next item gain or loss so each time you have you come to this session that have the option of either inflow or outflow once it is outflow you apply minus first <clears throat> before you type the amount so public debt charges is 16 but because it outflow is coming appearing under debit i will put minus before i type 16 then i will say enter do you know automatic it has put it in bracket then gain or loss on disposal of assets if you check the trial balance in the case study this one appear under credit so it means it's an inflow i will type it without putting negative but the last one gain or loss on exchange transaction it appear under debit that means outflow. I'll put minus and type four. So that at the end, I have total non-operating revenue expenses two. Surplus from operating activities 404. What should come to our mind? Cash flow statement. They have designed this statement of financial performance in the order we prepare our cash flow statement. Cash flow from operating activities cash flow from investing activities and cash flow from financing activities so that at the end of the day what is our net surplus for the period can you see it 406 million we are done with statement of financial performance that's the beauty of electronic accounting and electronic spreadsheets your own is to get the correct data and fix the formula will take care of the remaining. Now, the next thing we are asked to prepare from our case study, prepare the statement of financial position as at 31st December 2016 in conformity with the provisions of IPSAS and FAR. What I will do straight, I will click on this check. From your template, you see statement of financial position, I will click this. This is what they ask us to prepare. And once I go here, the next thing, <coughs> excuse me, the next thing is for us to begin to key in the relevant data. From our trial balance, please let's pay rapt attention. What is cash and cash equivalent from our trial balance? For those of us who have downloaded the question, is 230, you type 230. Did you notice that 
for this question we are solving, you are not the one who reclassify items as cash and cash equivalent, like we did under first time adoption. Here you are not adopting first time, it's continuity. Then inventories is 100, you put 100 there. Receivables, 90, you enter 90. Prepayment is 103, you enter 103. Are we there? Uh, we have 230, we have 190, 42. So we have total what? Current asset, total current assets as 523. Let me just check the question again very well. Cash and cash equivalents. Mm -hmm. 230, correct. Inventory 100, this 90 and 42. Sorry, prepayment is not 103. Prepayment is 42. Are we there now? Prepayment is 42. So we have 462. Then we'll go to non current assets. Loans granted is 80. Investment is 90. Property plant and equipment is 140. Investment property is 70. And intangible asset is 60. Can you see? Now we have what? If you want to define this one yourself, let me just type. This is now total. Total non current assets. This is total non current asset. Now the summation of your current asset and non-current give us 902. Now let's go to the other side, liabilities. Current liabilities, the first one is 65 deposits. Loans and debt short term, 40. Unremitted deductions, 30. Accrued expenses, 28. Current position of borrowing, 30. Can you see the total current liabilities? Then let's come for non-current liabilities. They are just two, 140 and 75. So total liabilities is 408. Can you see net asset, 494? Remember we have said, in IPSAS accrua, net asset must be equal to net asset. Now check your question very well. Accumulated funds and other reserves from our question is what? 88, you put 88. Can you see that there's a variation now? This account did not agree because the net asset from one part is 494, but this one is 88. What will you just do? is to go and bring in the figure of our net surplus. That is what makes the balance sheet to agree. And to do this, let me show you how something now. How do you link two Excel sheets together? I want to bring in our net surplus from our statement of financial performance. I want to bring a link it with statement of financial position. What you will do, see, you press equal to, when you press equal to, you go and click the sheet. This is statement of financial position where my cursor is blinking. I'll click it. Then I will click on 406. I want to transfer and link these two sheets. You see, I just click on it. I now press enter. Do you know automatically 406 has appeared here? And the net asset is now equal to net asset. We are done with case one and two.
are in Modu 2. Ladies and gentlemen, I will also leave you with an assignment here because of our time. Okay, we still have some time. I want you to go and attempt the statement of changes in equity. It's just to go and key in, but to do that, let me show you the template you need for that. See it here. I will come back again. This general purpose financial statement has four templates, four in one. The first one is statement of financial performance. The second one is statement of financial position. The third one is statement of cash flow. And the fourth one is statement of changes in equity. So this is the format, the template you need to solve case 33 on page six. Go and attempt it. Everything is there. Uh, balance brought forward at the beginning. The only thing I will just correct, you can go and edit this. If you check, this is 2016. And from the question itself, if you see case 33, say the following information was extracted from the books of a public sector entity for the year ended at 1st December 2016. So all you need to do is to edit this to 2016. See what I've done? It's opening balances as a 2016, then you continue with your work. And of course, this one will be balance at 2016, 2017, because after 2016 is 2017. The closing balance, for a period is the opening balance for another period. When you do that adjustment, uh, because this question asks us, okay, as a 2016, so it's 2016, correct? It means you will do 2014. Let's leave it the way it is. I'm just seeing that now. That the question itself asks us to prepare as at that first December 2016. So you will start at 2014, then 2015 and 2016. Is that okay? Go on, attempt that. Your question, please, unmute yourself and ask your question. Unmute yourself. Well, in team, madam, what's your question, please? Okay, sorry for disturbing. Please, sir, for those that don't have the template, how do we get the template? Uh, you go to Anna e Learning Portal. That's annanelearning.org. You will go and download them from there. There is, okay, yes, there is an e learning platform for Nigerian College of Accountancy student. And the domain name is Annan e Learning. So you write together. That's small case or lower case, eh, upper case. Okay. Anan e learning, but it's prefer, of course, it's lower case. Anan e learning.org. Okay. Then you see Ipsas and I fathers go and download. Okay. All right, we are almost there. Module three. My target is that by 10 30 or latest 11. Sorry, I'm, I'm looking at our time here. We started 10. By 12 or 12.30, 12 we should be done. Let's go to module three. Module three is on performance reports. Performance reports. And I'm going to share with us here, there's the case study. Case studies. Okay. Let me go back and download. If we can see the screen, see module three. Module three is on performance reports. Concerning performance reports, I have said, they are reports, additional reports expected of public sector entity to prepare in order to checkmate what and what they do or how they manage the resources 
what they do with resources and how to manage it. For example, if you take the first one here, I say prepare the monthly revenue budget performance report. What that one will help you to do as a custodian of the resources of government, you have a budget. You are expecting revenue of 500 million in a whole year, for example. And as at the end of the first quarter, that's January, February, and March inclusive, you have only received 10 million naira out of 500 million for a whole year. Check your performance and appraise yourself. Have you done well? Particularly if that revenue is not seasonal. If the majority of that revenue is expected to come into your bank account or to come into your organization within the first quarter, and out of 500 million you have budgeted, as at the end of the first quarter, you have only realized 10 million. Have you done well? This is a part of what this performance report to appraise ourselves. But where the bulk of the revenue you are expecting, maybe it's in third quarter, you can't score yourself bad. That's the focus here. When you say performance report, you pick each item. How much are we expecting for a whole year from this same, this particular source of revenue? Then as at March, month of March, how much have we realized from that source? Compare it with what you are expecting for a whole year. Then you do the appraiser. That is monthly revenue performance reports, monthly revenue budget performance report. I just want to have, us to have an idea before we start seeing cases and solution. Now we have another one here that is asking us to prepare monthly recurrent expenditure budget performance reports. This one will also guide you on how to manage your spending, expenditure, recurrent. And take a practical example. You have budgeted 100 million naira as personnel cost for a whole year. That's 12 months in a year. And as at the end of first quarter, you have already spent 60 million paying salaries. And outside that, you still have another 10 million salaries due, but you have not paid. People have worked for it and you have not paid them. So 60 million you have paid plus the 10 million that is due for payment but not paid. Add it, making 70 million. It means for the remaining nine months, you have only 30 million available. How do you now handle that situation? That is performance report to guide you. Then we have the capital expenditure performance report. The difference between the uh, recurrent and capital is that the monthly capital budget expenditure performance report focus on capital projects. You have a mark 200 million to complete a project. Let's say the project will last for a year and already at the end of first quarter, out of that 200 million, 150 million is already gone into the project. And expert has come, they've come to do the project analysis, the valuation of projects. And they tell you that your project is 90%. No, your project is only 20% completed and you have only 50 million left. How do you go about this? That is all we are seeing in performance reports. Then for cash advance accounting, cash advance report, see it cash advances report. What we are saying is you have cash advances given to individuals. Some will retire, some will not retire. Like I have a case, a practical experience. In 2010, 2010, I was privileged to be part of the presidential visitation panel asked to go and check to investigate the allocation to federal universities in Nigeria. And when we arrived at the university, I was, of course, in my own group, I was the only 
a chartered accountant. That's each team have a chartered accountant. That's a qualified accountant. And when we arrive at our own university, a lot of things discovered. Number one, I saw, let me just be specific now, I won't tell you the details of what we discovered, but I realized that in a particular month, 100 million Naira was given to a staff as cash advance. The next expectation when I was investigating is for me to see evidence of retirement. For that whole year, there was no evidence of retirement. I now checked the next year, the following year, I now saw that exact amount in their statement of cash flow. They say acquisition of assets. It's not adding up. So it's one of the reasons the subcommittee of Federation Accounts Allocation Committee have now said, going forward, any time cash advance is given to any employee or any staff of any ministry, department, or agencies, there should be a due date for retirement. And any staff who fail to retire within the due date, punishment will be served according to the laws. That is cash advance. So here you will see they have opening cash advance. Then they added the one for the year. Then less the one retired. If you have opening cash advance of 70 million, then during the year, they added another 50 cash advance. That's 120, right? But within that year, they only retired 40. That is 80 million. What this performance report will not show us, break down the 80 million Naira outstanding cash advance. And let us see the age of these cash advances that are outstanding. Out of the 80 million, how much is one month old, two months old, three months old, and so on, up to more than 12 months old. So that you will now check who are the officers that has violated the principle or the laws laid down, and you serve them the relevant punishment. That is all about the cash advances report. And finally, the fifth performance report is bank reconciliation. And that one, we know bank reconciliation is the same thing we have done, balance as per adjusted cash book, all done presented check, less uncredited check. That's what this question is asking us to do. So we are not going to waste time on this. I will show you uh, the solution to this and we share with us uh, later. See it here, performance report. I've just given you a summary. This one has been solved because of time. If we are taking all this. Um, let's see the first assignment from that question. We are asked to prepare the monthly revenue budget performance. Let me go to monthly. See the very first item. For revenue performance, can you see from the question itself, you say annual budget is 80 billion. Everything here is million. Don't worry about that. 80,000, let's call it the way it is there. What is the revenue for this month? Is there in the question? Share of statutory revenue, 15,000. Revenue to date. When they say revenue to date here, this column you are seeing. It means revenue generated from January, February, and March inclusive. Because this report is at 31st March 2016. See the target. Status revenue, the public sector entity is expecting 18,000 for the whole year. For the month of March alone, they've received 15,000. And the total they've collected so far, January, February, and March is 27,000. Once you divide 27,000 divided by 80,000, that is this column. Let me delete and show us again how we arrive. When you say equal to, I will click on 27, divide by that slash, I will put 80. I will say enter.
percentage achieve on budget. That is 27, we say, let me say equal to 27 divided by this. I'm using a different um, equal to 27 slash 80, then star. That's we are converting to 100. That's percentage. See it here. 33.75. That's how we arrive at that. 33.75. That is, you say 27,000 divided by 80,000 multiplied by 100. That's how we arrive at that. You do that for all the items. That is the revenue budget performance report. Case two asks us to prepare. The monthly recorded expenditure budget is here. When you check this, see the budget here. I think I can reduce this so you can see everything clearly. I'll pick only one to explain to us. It's just for you to have an idea. Personnel cost, annual budget, 44,000, everything million. Please pay attention to this. You get the principle so that anyhow the twist if I told you to be examined, you know how to handle it. 44,000. Actual expenditure for the month of March, 11,000. Actual expenditure to date, 22,000. The meaning is expenditure January, February, and March inclusive, 22,000. Liability committed means there are some staff of this entity who have worked, but they have not paid them. Accra and matching concept told us. Whether it is paid for or not, once they have done the service or you will enjoy the benefit, it must be accounted for. That's why when you had 22 actual expenditure to date, plus the one that is due and you have not paid, give us 30. The total money budgeted for personnel cost for a whole year is 44,000. That's 44 million or billion, billion. And as at the end of third quarter, January, February, and March, you have paid and also hold some of 30,000. How much is remaining for you for nine months remaining in the year? <laughs> you have 44,000 for a whole year. As at the end of March, 30,000 is gone. So you have only 14,000. This is where people begin to look, okay, what do we do? Do we begin to downsize, right size, or we go and get a loan to pay salaries, performance reports? The next one is capital expenditure performance reports. See it here, it operates the same way, like that recurrent. For property, plant, and equipment, you budgeted 64 billion. Actual expenditure for March, 4, 4 billion. Actual expenditure from January to March, 14 billion. What you owe your suppliers, contractors supplying goods to you, 3 billion. That's liability committed. So in total, 14 billion plus 3 billion give us 17. It means for property, plant, and equipment that you budgeted, 64 billion. As at the end of first quarter, 17 billion already gone. You have 47 billion left. That is the same thing for others. That's how this thing operates. Now, the next one asks us to case study four. If you're on case study four, case study four asks us to prepare cash advances reports. And case study four, let's see it here. The cash advances report. See the solution to case study four there. All you need to do from that question, opening balance as at the beginning of the month, you type it is 70 million. Total advances granted during the period, 50 million. Then total advances retired. They retired 40 out of this opening and additional advances. So they are left with 80 million. 
But what the law is now saying, or according to provisions of IPSAS, as released and approved by the subcommittee of Federation Accounts Allocation Committee, you are now expected to break down this 80 million. We want to see how much of the 80 million is due in one month, but has not been retired. 12. How much is due two more? Eight, seven, six, four, eleven, two, five, five point five, six million, nine point five, four million. Can you see the total? It must now agree. You must find out if you have total cash advance outstanding of 80 million. They expect you to break it down month by month until you have the total. And see the clause here. See one note. Total outstanding advances agree with the figure in the general ledger. Number two, officers with outstanding unretired advances be sanctioned as provided by extant rules. That's the work of cash advances so that people who collect cash advance can retire as I went to. And finally, for the last case study, you have your case study on page nine. The following data has been extracted from the books of Ministry of Niger Delta for the month ending that 1st January 2013. Cash book balance we are giving, debits in bank omitted in cash book, unpresented mandates, receipt cash book not in bank, direct lodgement in bank not in cash book, balance as per bank statement. Can you see that the balance as per bank statement is not the same thing as that of cash book? They say you are required to prepare the bank reconciliation statement. The second part of that question says, show the variance, if any, between the balance as per reconciliation and balance as per bank statement. That's what you have here. This is the cash book balance given, add on presented mandate, then credits in bank, not in cash. We've added that, give us this. Then less receipt in cash book, not in bank. Then debits in bank, not in cash book. Give us subtotal. Then we say balance as per bank reconciliation, as per the question given to us. As per what is given to us is 540, what we have done here. But check if the balance in our question is saying bank statement is 490. And we arrive at 540 by our calculation. It means there is an unreconciled variance of 50, the difference between 540 and 490. We are going to have this solution. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the last before we call it a day is module four. But before we go to module four, let us take one or two questions if there is any. The last module is module four, and module four is documentation. Documentation. That one also to make it fast and to save time. I will share the solution with us. We have it, you have all the solution. You go and study. Any questions so far? We have done module one, first time adoption of IPSAS. We we'll look at module two general purpose financial statement. And we just saw module three now, performance reports. So the last module will be documentation. Mr. Oriowo Samuel, you can unmute yourself and ask your question. Like there's network challenge there. Yeah? Yes, sir. All right, can go ahead. I'm saying that it's difficult for you to share the template with us. You're assessing the annual system, the number of people assessing the system. If you can control the central with us, 
for the first uh, for the model two and model one that you have solved earlier. See, is it the question you are asking or, or the solution? No, I'm saying that the, you said the template, that we can get the template for the financial manage, uh, performance. They are so all the there. The they are there. Let me, they are and there. I'm saying that, yes, it's there. But the crowd, the, the site for now is overcrowded because there's a lot of people going there. And I'm saying if it is possible, you share it here with us. I don't mind, sir. Okay, what you want me to share now, is it the solution or the question which the solution one? and the template the, temp the solution and the template i have the question already all right all right i will do that thank you sir mm. thank you sir all right let's take the last one uh, which is documentation again when we go to the question let me open the case study again so we'll see um See, module four, documentation, documentation. See the case study. We have about 12 of this case study here. Addressing each of the documentation or each of the documents expected of ministry, department of and agencies to maintain. Case study one, the following information has been extracted from the books of a public sector entity in respect of allocation for the month March 2016. Statutory allocation is given, and the dates are there. Special allocation of 5.4 million, and we are given the relevant code for all these transactions. Statutory allocation that's on 25th of March, 2016, 4.5 million. Let's go to requirement. Assign reference numbers and prepare the allocation register. See case study two. The case study two is on aids and grants register because all this documentation 12 of them they are either register or ledger i think there's only one ledger there so mostly majority are just register this register so case study three lagos entity for 2016 loan register can you see is the requirement the same pattern and case study four, assign the authority reference number and prepare the revenue register. So actually, this documentation are majorly registered for you to keep record. We have case study five. Case study five is asking us journal voucher is the requirement. Prepare the journal voucher. Case study six, prepare the loan ledger. There is a ledger, loan ledger. Case study seven is asking us to prepare the salary and wages register. Case study eight, you are to assign the authority document number and prepare for the PSE, the payable register. Case study nine is inventory issue register. Case 10 is to prepare account receivable register. And case study 11 is to post transaction to the ledger. And the last case study is investment register. Ladies and gentlemen, all these case studies has addressed all the 12 documents expected of ministry, department, and agencies to maintain according to the provisions of IPSAS and according to the statement and the publication released by the subcommittee of Federation Accounts Allocation Committee. So solution, let's look at it together. Um, IPSAS Financial Template General Purpose Documentation. See it here. You have this template there. And if you look at this one, we have renamed this sheet register that's allocation register now if you look at the question you see first march 2016 description this is the format description first e-filing installation as you have it in the case study ncoa code national chart of account code that's the meaning 
here we just assign based on the charts. But in exam, even if they ask you to assign any code, you can just assume they don't expect you to have all the code offhand. Then schedule reference number. That one assigned. I think the NCOA code is part of the question, but this reference number just assign any reference number yourself. Amount allocated. Can you see 10 million? The only area I want to draw our attention to is this cumulative to date. The first transaction is 10 million, but when you now see the second one, installation of platform 5.4 million. When you add 5.4 to 10 million, I give you 15.4, 15 million 400 thousand. The same thing when you add the next one, 4.5. So that at the end of the day, what this register will just show you that so far, so good. Our location register has a cumulative total of 24, 25,500,000. And see the summary posting at the end of the period. Debit, Federation Account Allocation Committee, Joint Account Receivable, 25, and Credit Revenue Item, 25,400,000. That is all you just need to do. Then, the second one is the head and grant register. Head and grant register. See the date, the donor, Shell Petroleum description is their NCOA code reference number. Can you see similarity in the way all these register operate? Cumulative also. Once it's registered, they are interested in the cumulative total. NMPC, make it 53. The next one, IMF make everything 66. And finally, we have 91 million. Then the loan register, again, all the loans collected from A, B, lender, description, amount. So that a glance, when you look at the register, the essence is to have an idea. What is the total cumulative amount? Or what is the cumulative balance in each of the register? 169 million, that's all. You go to revenue register, the same thing. See it. You post. Can you see cumulative for revenue register? 107 million. The, if you notice very well, all these register operate in a similar fashion. Then journals, you know all journals, which account are we debiting? Debit bank, credit agency, AB. That's the normal journal, you know. Then loans register. See the loans register, loan collected from their mom on 1st of January 2016. And it's 14 million. Salaries and wages register. See it here. Salaries and wages register. Then we have the payables register. If you look here again, see the cumulative for payables. Then inventory issue register. See it here, the inventory username, the notes, issue notes, engineering store, store item, NCOA code, amounts. Then we have the account receivable register. If you look at the account receivable register as well, check cumulative, we have it here. Ledger, the normal ledger, we know, but in the electronic form now, which one are we debiting, which one are we crediting? Then we have balance. And finally, I think the last one there should be the investment register. Documentation. See it here, investment register. Investment register will just take record of all your investment. See fixed deposit, investment in shares, fixed deposit shares and bonds, and so on. With this, let me go and take a conclusion before we take some few questions and call it a day. The IPSAS and effective adoption by reporting entities in Nigeria is about understanding the roadmap to adoption 
the chart of account disclosure requirement and practical implementation via the prescribed format. It is the ability of the preparers of financial statement to understand the nitty gritty of disclosures and apply them correctly that makes them have a good mastery of financial reporting. On this note, we are recommending that to be professionals, attend practical oriented practical oriented training such as this one we're having and other ones that we come you will see you notice you see publications later organized by the association because learning is a continuous process and in machiavelli's cautionary note hear what he said as i conclude there is nothing more difficult to carry out or more doubtful of success no more dangerous to handle than to initiate a new order of things. Say the reformer has enemies in all who profit by the old order and only lukewarm defenders in all those who will profit by the new order. Say this lukewarmness arises partly from fear of the adversaries who have the law in their favor and partly from the incredulity of mankind who do not truly really believe in anything new until they have to have actual experience of it. What is this quotation just telling us? That people who profit from the old way will not want to embrace change. I've seen people, young graduates, smart people, intelligent, digital accountants who work, they go to organization, they want to bring new ideas. Those who have been there before, we even tell them the history of their life ever before you were born. This is how we have been doing it. And unknown to them that until the process change, the output, the result will remain the same. So those who benefit from the old way, they don't want change. But then when human beings now faced with reality that the wind of change will soon blow me away, if I don't change as time changes, that is when they now settle down to adapt to these changes. That's just the summary. And I say here also, the literate of the 21st century is not one who cannot read or write, but one who cannot learn, relearn, and unlearn. Branson, great mind, telling us, if someone offers you an amazing opportunity and you are not sure you can do it, say yes, then learn how to do it later. Accounting is an economic information system which deals with the transformation of economic data into information useful for decision-making. It is past-looking, present-looking, and future-looking. Have a wonderful day as we will conclude here. Questions? If you have questions, thank you for your attention. So we we'll take questions. Thank, uh, thank you very question. much. Thank you, sir. Dear prof, for the way you're giving so much attention to today's training. We appreciate, sir. Thank you, sir. So on that note, please, if you have any question, you can indicate by using the raise of hand icon. Or you can drop your question via any question. So I believe there's no question, just gratitude. Thank can you. we get the recorded version? Yes, the recorded version will be dropped on chat please thank you very much thank you sir are we going to have certificate on this training yes sir there's a provision for certificate including the one for pea certification course in digital accounting yes they will have okay sir thank you very much that's your answer please there's going to be a certificate for that are we paying for the certificates, Maxwell? 
a point. You have, you have paid already. I think you are not paying. I I think uh we we take care of that. I will liaise with you, sir. Uh, we are trying to see how we work and make the electronic copy available so students can can go and print their certificate instead of we we'll work out that whichever if it will work fine if it's not all right sir we'll do no that. problem sir so that you respect your that. location so respect right, their location they can just print their certificates okay that would be nice that would be beautiful mm. thank you so much sir thank you sir uh, 60646 you've just had that possibly there will be e-copy so just sit tight we'll give you update then can we get the question the question is go to is in annan elearning.org the idea that's the case study annan anna elearning.org the e-learning platform the questions are there the um, including the templates. And I will also advise that they download the question for tomorrow's training, that's IFRS. You can download and print, let them have it at copy. All right, sir. So what about the solution from Mambe Ilya Gajong? I'm sharing the solution. The solution will, to the question. I will send it, I think I will share it. Oh, okay, sir. All right, sir. Thank you very much, sir. And do have a beautiful day. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Bye. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir.